Hey guys, how's it going? So, for those that don't know, I recently moved back home from university. I officially graduated undergrad, so feeling great about that. Um, past quantum mechanics. Um, so glad I never have to touch any of that material again. But one of the interesting things is that during my 22 car, uh, 22 hour car ride home, I worked on a lot of graphics and tried some new things. So I thought it would be a really cool idea to kind of go back and forth between the graphics I worked on and the graphics I'm working on right now and talk about them. Also, at the end of the video, um, I want to show you guys a graphic that I worked on, nothing to do with membrane proteins, but actually has to do with hemoglobin. Now this was probably my first attempt at doing a infographic, a little animation talking about a protein complex in super detail. So stay tuned because I would really appreciate you guys' opinion on this one. Probably the first protein that I wanted to find a creative way to talk about and the different types of it were integral proteins. Integral proteins are kind of like the most common protein type when first talking about cell membranes and bilayers. The interesting thing about these proteins is that they have really strong interactions with a membrane. And there's many different types. You have single pass, multi-pass, and they vary on where the carboxylic end is and where the amino end is or the end terminal. Now, the interesting about these things is that to at least go through the membrane once, you need at least 25 amino acids. So things that go through the membrane multiple times, those are pretty long protein complexes. And in order to remove these proteins from the membrane, we have to interact with the hydrophobic regions within the center. So the next type of membrane proteins or proteins that have interactions with the membrane that I want to talk about are proteins that have connections with specific lipids or anchors on the membrane. So what makes these proteins different is that they're interacting with specific lipids within the membrane to kind of act as an anchor to hold them to the membrane. Now, these interactions are not as strong as integral proteins, but there's many different types of anchors and some are definitely stronger than others. But usually when we think about these anchors, it's usually to keep them just on one side or the other of the membrane. And probably the last membrane type protein that I want to talk about, at least in this video, are peripheral proteins. Now peripheral proteins are only kind of embedded on one side of the bilayer. So they only have interactions with either the side that faces the cell or the, the side that's outside the cell. Now these interactions or these proteins have really, really weak interactions with the membrane. They're easily pulled off and sometimes they're easily pulled off through like regulation of biochemical pathways. Now there's kind of like two types when we think about them. There's the peripheral proteins that have weak interactions with one of the leaflets and there's peripheral proteins that actually have connections or interactions with integral proteins that are embedded in the membrane.
go ahead and finish up this graphic with just filling in the, re the rest of the layers and working on some of the colors. I want to go ahead and talk to you guys about the new type of infographic I created. So this one is kind of really specific. It just kind of just focuses on one type of protein. In this graphic, I focus on hemoglobin, the heme group, the functions of hemoglobin. And so it took a little bit of experimenting and creativity, but I would love to get your feedback on this type of graphic. Do you guys like this? Would you guys like to see more? I was thinking about doing one about cytochrome C complex and how its heme group works for its function, but definitely tell me what you guys think in the comments. So I can think about future content.
we're wrapping up here. I mean, I'm just finishing the last few frames of this little animation I did. But besides the hemoglobin stuff, what do you guys think about this type of study with me video? Then I kind of go back and forth between graphics I created and graphics that I'm currently creating throughout the video that we're doing. Um, just a little PSA, I guess, on top of that is that I'm home. Um, with the family, so I'm definitely trying to find ways to um, learn how to continue doing my graphics and work from home, um, and definitely not my studio, but I can definitely find some ways. Um, I hope you guys are doing good, and have a great day.